thank you very much. Thank you all for the invitation. And um, thank you also uh, for the organizing committee. So uh, in particular, Professor Kumar and Professor Dawson. So today I will, I will present uh, the first uh, investigation on jellyfish population in Qatar sea waters and trying to link the role of artificial shoreline development recently and some hydroclimatic uh, uh, change or variables on uh, Scyphozoans blooms. So I will start. Oh, sorry, it's not working. Excuse me. I cannot move my slide. Sorry. Mohammed, we are having yes, some yes. issues here with the presentation. I think the, the people here will try to. Okay. No, I think maybe. Uh... I will use my presentation like this. Okay. You can see it. Yes, yes, yes. Go because on. full screen, full screen is not working. Okay. So I will use it like this. Don't worry. Okay, thanks. So uh, after presenting very rapidly the background and the research problem, I will focus on the research methodology how I investigate uh, Qatar jellyfish diversity and numerical ecology here, and. Um, I will present some results on the diversity of jellyfish and focusing more on uh, later on the phylogeny of uh, Scyphozoan species and trying to understand the main factor controlling uh, Scyphozoan blooms along the Qatari coast and doing some conclusion and research pers perspective at the end. So we all know we are all here because of them, because, because of the blooms and the recurrent phenomenon of jellyfish a blooming invasion and impact uh, and uh, this is also is observed in the in the arabian or the persian gulf here near qatar and uh, we have since 2012 several uh, newspapers that uh, show the massive events and impacts on uh, human health and uh, when we look to the paper we just highlight the importance of what we are doing doing uh, uh, more than 5,000 papers have been published uh, uh, since the 70s on jellyfish. So it's, it's a very important topic, and that's why we are here. Um, previously, I was working in the Mediterranean Sea, so I will share some uh, picture showing the impact uh, or the outbreaks of some species that you may know in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, this is in the north of Tunisia. Previously, it was the south, the Gulf of Gabes, and recently, uh, we have also a massive uh, jellyfish bloom events in the Arab and Gulf. I am not sure that I can share this uh, video with you because of uh, some technical issue. Uh, but believe me, uh, we can count uh, maybe 20, 30 uh, uh, Catostilis perezi per cubic meter uh, on uh, an area covering uh, uh, dozens of kilometers square uh, recently in June 2020 between the north of Qatar and uh, Bahrain and the Arab Saudi. So it's also here uh, an important uh, 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 impact. Uh, we all know the impact on tourism, fisheries, aquaculture, uh, power station, public health, uh, ecosystem, trophic structure, and uh, I will more focus on uh, hydroclimatic uh, uh, variables. Uh, this slide summarizes uh, all the possible impacts uh, which are in favor of the development of the jellyfish, at least at the coastal level uh, in several seas and oceans. Um, our investigation in Qatar First of all, I just want to, to remind you or show you uh, the circulation in this in this region, in this Gulf, uh, that is more working like a Mediterranean Sea, let's say. As you can see, there is an entrance uh, of uh, uh, water with 37 
PSU salinity. And because of uh, the hard condition and the high evaporation, we uh, very rapidly uh, reached some water with very high salinity uh, crossing uh, here, as you can see, the north and east of Qatar. Uh, at the coastal level, we can have even more uh, high salinities uh, and temperatures. So our, our program, our jellyfish monitoring program, uh, show here some coastal station, more or less regular, at least at the seasonal level, and some offshore station in, in green on this map. So we, uh, we applied two type of uh, monitoring, an offshore monitoring program and the coastal monitoring, and we try to uh, sample uh, and measure several in situ uh, parameter uh, and sample phytoplankton, zooplankton, nutrients, and chlorophyll A. Uh, the offshore jelly survey was developed previously in several uh, papers, and it's an easy way to count the macro jellyfish uh, and in general, uh, it's the skidphosoans that are uh, in the in the subsurface, and we can estimate a large volume between 10,000 and 50,000 cubic meter. Uh, here's some some photo of our uh, campaign uh, offshore. For the coastal jelly survey, uh, we can count the, the the jellyfish that are stranded on the beach or. Uh, along the intertidal zone, and we can cover between five to 10 kilometers square. So as soon as we have all these quantitative or maybe sometimes semi-quantitative data uh, coming from citizen science report, social media, we try to integrate all these data to create a kind of uh, abundance index based on the previous work of uh, Leonie et al. 2021. And uh, we also build an environmental and satellite data that we uh, mix together to try to understand uh, the, the drivers of, of the blooms using uh, some uh, statistical software, uh, such as Primer 7 here. So the main parameter that or variables uh, were the jellyfish abundance here, I'm talking about the skiffoso ones, uh, the wind direction, for example, wind speed, geopotential height, sea surface temperature, chlorophyll A. Uh, and uh, in general, we transform our, our data using square root function. Uh, we use the Euclidean distance uh, to create the triangular similarity matrix. And uh, in this case, we use the non-metric multidimensional scaling method to, uh, to ordinate our, our, our data. So for the shoreline change analysis, we use the geographic information system. Uh, it was a work part contribution of my uh, senior project student. And the images were developed using uh, the United States Geological Survey. Uh, all the images were taken from the Landsat satellites and uh, had a resolution of 30 meters. And uh, all process of the shoreline analysis were done using arches. Uh, and also the digital shoreline analysis system methods. So here, for example, you can see uh, comparison between satellite images uh, in the 90s compared to nowadays, and you can see uh, how the, the, the shoreline was developed with the uh, artificial uh, island created here, uh, the pearl uh, or the region, the, the, the airport. So when we... Uh, here it's the digitized shoreline and baseline uh, during the, the different years in different colors, part of our analysis. So in terms of diversity, uh, our first investigation uh, showed that we have almost or at least, let's say, 10 uh, hydrozon in the Qatar sea water. Among them, uh, we have uh, three uh, new records for the region such as uh, Solmaris Corona, Solmundela Bituntapulaka, and Geriona Probosidalis. Uh, for the, for the Skifozoans, uh, we uh, record uh, five species. Among them, uh, two are new for the region, uh, Prisaura CF uh, Caliparea and uh, Cassiopeia Andromeda. 
uh, we published recently a first record uh, on Qatar uh, skiff uh, In terms of phenology of the dominant Skiffosan species, uh, the most important one was Chrysaura caliparia. And when we apply the abundance index, you can see uh, that we have two important blooms, one in 2017 and one in, in uh, 2020. Uh, for Catostilis perezi, we have uh, some observation in 2015, but uh, regular uh, blooms during the last years. So it seems that here we may have a, 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 a cycle of three, four years of absence followed by a few years of presence, exactly what we observed, for example, previously in the Metal Sea with Pelagia Noctilita or with Rhizostoma pulmo. And uh, so uh, when we average the data between 2015 and 2021, we can uh, draw kind of uh, phenology of uh, these two species. In general, catostilis appear very early and uh, disappear in September, while uh, Prisaura appear in May and disappear in November sometime with uh, important blooms for both species in June and uh, also important blooms of Chrysaura in, in October. And you can see here some data to show you the, the extreme condition where our jellyfish are, are blooming. I mean, in, in the summer, the salinity can reach 45 PSU uh, in the East Coast and even 70 PSU in the West Coast of Qatar with the uh, temperature reaching uh, 34, 35 uh, degrees Celsius and high chlorophyll A concentrations. Uh, when we analyze the, the, the anomaly, the standardized anomaly, you can see that uh, we have positive anomaly of Prisaura caliparia in 2017 and 2020. Uh, for Catostilis the anomalies are more manata positive, let's say, since two, uh, 2020. Uh, in terms of uh, shoreline land analysis, you can see that we have a clear trend. Uh, and uh, since the 2000, we have a regular increase of the artificial shoreline. And unfortunately, when we try to, to, to calculate simple correlation, uh, it's not very well correlated with the shoreline. Maybe we we, can, we have to adjust uh, the method here to try to to better understand the, the link. So when we extend our observations uh, to uh, and we increase the time series, I mean, uh, and we focus on the period uh, 2012 uh, until now, uh, and we add the satellite data for chlorophyll A, sea surface temperature, etc. And we analyze the standardized anomaly uh, again. Uh, uh, you can see that the the anomaly of the schizophosoan uh, blooms, or I mean abundance, uh, are sometimes followed by period of positive anomaly of shoreline uh, and associated in this case with uh, anomalies of chlorophyll A, as you can see. Uh, or uh, sometimes it can be linked to negative anomaly of the wind and positive anomaly of geopotential A. So uh, when we put all these uh, and we try to do a multivariate analysis using the NMDS method, uh, we can see that uh, the most important factor that uh, are able to explain uh, jellyfish abundance are the chlorophyll A, the wind speed, and the sea surface temperature. So uh, in conclusion of this work, uh, we can uh, conclude and say that uh, Skifozoa jellyfish population in Qatar sea water seems to be increasing during the last decade, but we need maybe more investigation and a longer time series and uh, observations. Uh, nevertheless, our investigation uh, allows us to identify at least 10 hydrozone species. Among them, three are new records for the Gulf region. 
five Skifkozoa species, uh, among them two are new record for the Gulf region. Uh, both species, Chrysaura caliparea, which is more oceanic compared to Catosilus perezi, which is more neritic, are the dominant Skifkozoan species in Qatar Sea water and maybe in the Gulf. Uh, and they are a little bit similar for the people who are coming from Mediterranean Sea when we compare Pelagia noctiluca and Rhizostoma pulbo that is more coastal. So we have a little bit the same, I mean, uh, dynamic. So in terms of uh, perspective, research perspective, actually we have some ongoing research trying to identify or confirm the identification, I mean, of Pisaura caliparea because our species have some characteristic uh, allow us to to, to give the name of Caliparea, but some also uh, morphological characteristic from Sinendi. So maybe maybe uh, we need to do a DNA barcoding and it's ongoing research. And uh, another uh, research perspective would be to explore the potential ecological niche of both uh, species uh, by developing a species distribution model or ecological niche modeling and uh, any type of uh, joint research collaboration on these aspects as well. Thank you uh, very much. Uh,